Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank uh, the organizers, Do Telecom, for uh, inviting us here as Oracle. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you about managing uh, your direction and adoption of cloud and uh, possible approaches to this uh, based on what we have seen with our customers around the world uh, and here indeed in EMEA. Um, so uh, firstly, I'm putting up a safe harbor statement because some of the things I'm going to talk about are not yet released, uh, so it's a legal app thing. Uh, here's my structure. So I'm gonna talk briefly uh, and outline how you could manage your direction to the cloud. I'm going to talk extensively about hybrid cloud security uh, because at Oracle we believe the on-premise world and your systems will be around for many, many years to come. Uh, at the recent open world in San Francisco, Larry Ellison said it'll be at least 10 years before there's a significant transition to cloud. So there'll be a coexistence of on-premise systems and public cloud systems, Oracle and non-Oracle, for quite a period of time. So hybrid cloud, in fact, is the core of my talk. I want to give you some insight into Oracle public cloud, particularly the infrastructure as a service and platform as a service part, uh, and very briefly talk about what Oracle covers. I could talk for about 90 minutes or perhaps longer on that, uh, on that, but I don't have the time today. I want to point out early and late that as Oracle has responsibilities in cloud security, uh, but like with other suppliers, so has the customer. You guys in the audience have responsibilities as well. We've heard uh, a number of the talks this morning that security is everyone's job. Uh, that's actually true. Uh, we haven't figured out how to automate it completely. There's a lot of process and people and shared responsibility. So that's what I hope to get through in 30 minutes. So the different approaches to cloud we have seen are that people could start with SaaS. So they might start with some individual uh, software as a service application such as uh, HR or human capital management or uh, something like that, maybe customer relationship management. Uh, when doing so, from a security point of view, we would advocate that you think about beyond just getting a, an individual point SaaS application uh, and try and think longer term, what is it you're trying to do with SaaS? And for sure, you will need to think about integration with the on-premise world uh, in general, data integration, and security integration in particular. I mentioned uh, an open architecture. Uh, it's not new in security that, <coughs> excuse me, that open systems and standards are needed. You do need standards and you need adherence to standards uh, for cloud security to work. Uh, so open systems is very important. We have other customers who start and are more interested in PaaS, uh, platform as a service and they uh, could be creating something new, some new digital application, as I mentioned in the last point, or they might be trying to move some existing workload onto PaaS, something that's using middleware and ex uh, databases ex uh, and exists already in the company. Um, uh, one example is we have customers trying to move over development and test activities. So they're they have a development group and testing department and the way they dip their toe in the water or maybe foot in the water uh, is to start with development and test rather than moving over production workloads that's been going on for some years by now and on the right hand side IaaS infrastructure as a service where basically you get a virtualized computer available to your uh, to your uh, internal IT, IT department or line of business there you could simply lift some existing application, and we'll be have a big push on this in the coming years, to lift something that exists already in the on-premise world, lift it as is into the IaaS world from the on-premise world. Uh, keep the same IP addresses, keep the same security controls, it can be identical. Uh, I would suggest that uh, rather than keep it identical, that this would be a good time to upgrade the security of that application when moving it from the on-premise onto IaaS. And you can do that in a number of ways. You could do that by improving the database security bits or by putting strong authentication uh, around the, the set of applications that are being moved. So I'll say more about that. So these are three different um, entry points or, and of course all three could be done in parallel or two in parallel 
or just one. Apologies for all the text on this, uh, but uh, these are the main points uh, around um, cloud and moving to cloud. And it's independent of which of the path you choose, whether it's SaaS, PaaS, or IaaS. So you need to comply with local regulations and indeed international regulations and industry regulations. Uh, you should aim for as much uniformity and reuse and commonality across PaaS, uh, SaaS, and IaaS. You don't want more complexity uh, and an explosion of complexity that, that you will get otherwise. Uh, you do have to think about your existing on-premise environment, as I said at the beginning. So cloud services from Oracle and indeed uh, from uh, other organizations, will, they will increase in the coming years. That's the prediction all over the world for various reasons, cost reasons, uh, efficiency reasons, security reasons. Uh, I and Ed and others in Oracle would argue that cloud is more secure, can be more secure as we work together, uh, but that requires us to do a good job and indeed you to do a good job as well. And I hope to, hope to outline some of that. Uh, my fourth bullet, it's, this is an opportunity to improve the customer experience. So as we move to cloud, uh, cloud's not the only thing that's happening. We have mobile as well. We have so, uh, younger people with social networking, uh, social networks type experience. So people expect a very good user uh, experience when they're using systems. So that's an opportunity to think about that. And indeed security can help with that to make things more intuitive and usable. And you only get prompted, for example, to add some strong authentication factor when required, depending on what you're using. A uh, number of speakers have talked about the need for auditing and monitoring. Um, we believe that's needed, and it's needed across the on-premise and cloud space. So ideally, you want an integrated view. Not, a, not super easy to arrange, but that uh, should be the goal. You want this holistic view of everything. Uh, you will need to put governance in place uh, to handle continuous change. I think it was Governor Tom Ridge talked about change and that the world is dynamic. So in cloud, we talk about releasing new systems uh, every month, maybe every week, upgrading systems. So IT environments are becoming much more dynamic. The security fraternity needs to become more dynamic, I would say, uh, and perhaps less static as it has been, and be able to cope with continuous change. Um, you need to be able to have the skills to review the security facilities and services being provided by companies like Oracle. And last and not least, you need to decide which security services you will use on-premise and which you will consider taking from a supplier like Oracle or indeed IBM or someone else. So would you trust security services coming from a cloud service provider? Would you like to have it uh, inside your own organization? The advantages of getting it from some specialist company, and I see do here are a managed uh, security services provider, is you get the expertise, you get the know-how, you get the backup, you get support. And the, the disadvantage is you have to place trust in an outside organization. But I think that can, it can be managed and trust is possible because the people supplying these services do need you to trust them and to do a good job. Otherwise, uh, they could be in trouble. So lastly, hybrid cloud will dominate in the com cur coming years. So that's a little bit of a lengthy introduction. So hybrid, uh, architecture, we have some security patterns we talk about w when talking about hybrid cloud security to try and uh, simplify this. And I'm suggesting that you should think about these patterns as a way to simplify complexity, so you have simpler pictures rather than complex pictures. And we have four key areas we talk about uh, to try and simplify this hybrid cloud security space. We talk about identity management. Uh, it's not new, it's been around for many years in the on-premise world. Uh, it's still relevant and very relevant for the cloud security space, except now it has to handle both worlds, on-premise and in the cloud, Oracle Cloud Services and non-Oracle Cloud Services. Uh, another area referred to a number of times today, you need to have security monitoring and analytics, and I have more to say on that a little bit later. Uh, of course, we need data security, we need to encrypt data, we need to make sure only the right people get access to data. That doesn't mean systems administrators and IT staff, so we have to think about privileged user management and segregation of duties. Uh, of course, we have network security, of course, traditional network security like VPN, 
uh, uh, SSL, uh, uh, for example. And then we also have to think about API security, so application programming interfaces based on XML or nowadays on JSON uh, need to be secured as well. So these are kind of broad brush things that need to be thought about in hybrid cloud security. So traditionally, and what we offer today, is that the identity and access management box in the bottom middle uh, is on-premise. So today, if you get identity management from Oracle, it's on-premise, and that's very good. That same system can be used on-premise to manage on-premise applications and indeed Oracle cloud applications and non-Oracle cloud applications. Uh, there's a prediction from Gartner that identity and access management will stay on-premise for quite a while for many customers. However, there's also uh, information from Gartner and others saying that identity management will also take up uh, increase in popularity as a cloud service. So in the near future, uh, as in weeks rather than months, uh, perhaps even next week, uh, we will launch our uh, identity cloud service. Uh, it's already been announced at Open World and talked about extensively. Uh, it's not yet available for purchasing. But the idea is that the services that were available on premise will over time be available as a cloud service. And this makes standing up identity management systems easier, quicker, all the usual reasons that uh, for cloud services, uh, quicker to deploy um, and easier to manage. So there's a choice that you face, which is do you go with something in the cloud, do you go with something on premise, or indeed a mix? And I would contend that you'll probably end up doing a mix of things. That's what we see talking to early adopters on for this in the past half year. Uh, for example, you might use the on-prem, sorry, the in the cloud identity service for new digital applications uh, and things, applications you're building in the cloud or indeed for SaaS applications, Oracle and non-Oracle um, SaaS systems. So we see that a whole range, all the functionalities I talked about need to be available kind of in the middle here uh, where it's, it doesn't matter if the service is being provided on premise or in the cloud. So we have our identity piece, access management, identity governance. We have data security and API security and lastly network security and a lot of detail within those. And it shouldn't matter if they're in the cloud or on premise and I'll say a little bit more on that later. So the Oracle cl public cloud, uh, there's a lot to say, and I don't have enough time to say a lot, so I will be brief and point out a couple of things. First thing I want to point out is, according to Wikipedia, and indeed the wider industry, and indeed Oracle, uh, IaaS and PaaS security is a shared responsibility. And it's that because uh, Oracle or indeed other cloud service providers, our job is to, pr to provide a, uh, a, a computer space, a compute space and a storage space uh, that is your private area. It's a virtualized environment, but it's your private area. And you need to manage the users within that. You need to ma uh, control the data security within that. Uh, and Oracle needs to do a lot of the things on the lower layers. So firstly, I want to comment on the things that Oracle needs to do and do already do, in fact, in public cloud. We have public cloud services now for several years. So defense in depth is not new uh, in, secure, in IT. Uh, it applies equally well or even more so in cloud. Um, so we have many layers of security. You don't rely on one layer to protect your system. And you'll see something more on that in a couple of slides. Uh, one sh should only get access to data on a need to know basis. So you have a least privilege principle and data should be masked uh, or encrypted where possible. So minimize the access to data. And you want, as well as having a prevention strategy, you need to be, of course, have a monitoring and detection strategy and an ability to respond to incidents. And that's true on the Oracle side and it's true on the customer side for IaaS and PaaS services when you're running something in that environment. So here's a complicated picture. I won't try to talk about all of it. Uh, but we think about all of these aspects. Physical security still matters. So buildings and physical data center security matters. Uh, access to buildings and systems matters. And we have uh, in 
and we indeed have all the latest technologies there, video surveillance, biometric scanners, uh, et cetera. Data security, data access, of course, data should be encrypted or redacted uh, where possible. Uh, data should be masked. Any data that is not in a production environment, if it's in development and test, for example, should be anonymized or masked. Uh, we, ha we indeed run uh, SIM uh, intrusion detection systems and have SIM solutions for Oracle Public Cloud uh, monitoring the parts that we're covering. And I'd say, well, I'd say even right now, you would need to have the same for the IaaS and PaaS environment. And we are I'll jump ahead and say we're offering tools to support that. Um, the network security I've mentioned already on the customer access part, all of that needs to be encrypted and, and using uh, firewalls. Uh, maybe that's all I would say. Yeah, there's a lot of governance and auditing takes place, daily scans, batching, uh, patching and versioning. Um, and something I don't have here, uh, sorry, it's the next picture. So this is a, sim a simplified view of the security we have across uh, IaaS and PaaS. So underneath IaaS and PaaS, starting from the bottom, we have low level security controls at the network level. We have people, process, uh, people and process and procedures in place uh, and controls that we've had in place for many years. We have some shared controls that are common to IaaS and PaaS, such as identity management. So identity, these cloud is an identity driven system. Based on who you are, uh, the system can decide what, you, what it is you should be permitted to do. So that's the least privileged principle. And then above that, we have, um, we have security built into each and every IaaS and PaaS service, the additional security that is specific to a given service. Uh, I want to mention on the right hand side, number two, your security does depend on having a secure development life cycle. So Oracle has been developing software for approximately 30 years by now. So we have a secure uh, development and testing process for developing and delivering all software, including cloud software. And no one's software in the world is 100% uh, perfect. No one knows how to do 100% security. And that's one of the reasons we have defense in depth, multiple layers. But this is what the picture looks like for the security across IaaS and PaaS. So I want to say a few words about the part that the customer is responsible for. So it's not so popular to say the customer is responsible for things as well. But it turns out in IaaS and PaaS, the idea is we give you a, a, a private environment. We shouldn't come and interfere in that environment and see everything you're doing. We provide the environment, that's it. It becomes your, your apartment. You have the keys. What you do inside is your business. So we provide tools to help you secure that. But in fact, for IaaS and PaaS, a lot of the administration and security management has to be done on the customer side. Oh, yeah, I should say here a couple of words, something else. Yeah, they, we published a white paper on this back in uh, April. And this, if, if you get these slides, the, this white paper link is clickable. And it's quite a detailed white paper, 35 pages long, quite detailed. It's, it's pretty technical, uh, uh, to be fair. Uh, and it's describing really the details that go in this of this model and the security within those five layers I outlined. So it's a public white paper. And uh, there's a presentation to go with it. If you ever want to be presented to you, just ask, come back to myself. Um, this is an approximation of responsibilities. In reality, the uh, responsibilities are defined in contracts. So you'd have to see the Oracle contract for the details without being too legalistic here. So a, a lot of the security facilities that the customer needs to use are included in IaaS and PaaS. Uh, however, some of them are not included uh, by default, but we are increasing the amount of security services we're providing for the customer piece. For the Oracle part that we're responsible for, I won't say absolutely everything is available today, but uh, it's very, very well covered. And in fact, we, re we in fact use a lot of the same tools and technologies for providing IaaS and PaaS to multiple customers as you would use to secure your individual IaaS and PaaS, env PaaS environment. Uh, walking through them, so the Oracle, as you know, has been a major leader in the database area. So the same facilities we have for securing databases on-premise 
are available in the public cloud as well with a couple of twists. So we can encrypt data, we can ensure that database administrators cannot see sensitive data. Uh, those database administrators would be your database administrator because the database cloud service is running on in your PaaS environment. Uh, we can mask data, we can label data, so it's, it's only available to the right individuals. We have something called data redaction, which means that in real time the data can be masked from the production database re being returned to the application. And then on the bottom uh, left, we have some facilities, so key management. When you encrypt data, you have to have passwords or keys, and those keys have to be stored somewhere and, man and their life cycles managed. So we have something called Key Vault, and that is available on-premise for both managing the on-premise part and the in-the-cloud part, the keys that are required for your database. So we have a key management facility. Similarly, we have an, audit, uh, an auditing facility, and that's available on-premise to collect the audit records from databases into a single data warehouse and generate reports and alerts. That's nowadays extended to include the cloud world as well. So referring back to what I said earlier, we need visibility ac across the full hybrid space. So the on-premise and the cloud part. And then I mentioned Identity Cloud Service announced at Open World, and I've said it's uh, available. We're using it to provide, I uh, will be using it uh, to provide to control identities and access to all cloud services. Today, we're using its predecessor. The on-premise offering is, in fact, used as part of public cloud. But this is a new tool built from the ground up using microservices uh, and the latest design ideas from cloud. Uh, with something else, I mentioned protecting APIs. So we uh, will soon, hopefully, uh, in, in some months, have an API platform cloud service. It was demonstrated at Open World, but it's not yet uh, shipping. Uh, for protecting APIs within the IaaS and PaaS space. Uh, we just announced acquiring another company, uh, Palera, again during Open World a couple of weeks ago, and its purpose is to act as a, a gateway within your on-premise world towards all cloud services. So it's a, an amalgamation of a lot of cloud services into a logical box that lives on-premise and acts as a gateway between your on-premise world and all of the cloud services out there to uh, give you visibility into what your um, users are doing and to make sure there, there's no shadow IT working in the background using services uh, that they shouldn't be and making sure that people who no longer need to access the cloud services don't have access uh, any longer. Uh, the tooling supports things like federation as well. So quite a bit in um, the, it's called a CASB, Cloud Access Security Broker, is a class of uh, tool of it needed on-premise for in interacting with um, multiple clouds. And I would say that's probably a, a, an important component, not absolutely essential, but an important component when thinking about your um, managing a secure path to cloud. It's a component that you would need in an architecture for interacting with multiple external cloud services. And uh, lastly, on this picture, we have this security analytics and monitoring cloud service also announced at Open World, not available, not shipping just yet, uh, but won't be too far out. And its goal is to do what some other speakers refer to, which is to collect log information from underlying cloud services in Oracle, non-Oracle cloud services, and indeed your on-premise uh, services. And it's working primarily by collecting log information and it's got machine learning and AI techniques built in there. It's built on a big data repository, so you have a data lake, and then we do these log analytics and have machine learning algorithms that are aiming to find the needle in the haystack to surface the prob issues that are problems. So it's tracking, uh, it's a new, a new style for security analytics, which is it's tracking the user or indeed the entity behavior. So you're watching what a given user is doing right throughout their journey around a system. And when something unusual happens, this is a, you can surface this to the analyst who's working in the SOC uh, security, op security Operations Center. Uh, so that, that's a very interesting piece of tooling. Uh, some other speakers refer to the shortage of cybersecurity skills. That's absolutely correct. Uh, you need this kind of tooling because of shortage of skills, but also for real-time monitoring and alerting. Uh, this tool is aiming to automatically harden systems and do a lot of things automatically as well. So very exciting development, I would say, from my own point of view. 
Um, so these tools, we're using them ourselves underneath the covers in Oracle Cloud, but they're also available to you to use to secure the IaaS and PaaS environments. Uh, so that, as I mentioned, there's this split responsibility. It's maybe too complicated to get into today, uh, 30 minutes, but there is a split responsibility and there's parts that you need to do. And we're aiming to provide as many as the, of the tools as possible. Now you still need to have third party tools that Oracle doesn't cover uh, and indeed uh, antivirus, anti-malware, et cetera. Uh, but, but the tools I mentioned just up to now cover quite a big part of this space. So uh, I'm down to my last slide, our second last slide, sorry. Uh, we have data centers around the world. We don't have a data center in every country. Everybody would like a data center in their local city. That maybe isn't that practical uh, for any of the cloud service providers. It will grow over time. But we also have something called an Oracle Cloud Machine, and that's deployed within your data center, so you can have Oracle Public Cloud in your data center. It's a mirror image, or identical to what's in Oracle Public Cloud, it just happens to be sitting on a machine in your data center, your, your carpet tiles, your air conditioning, rather than ours, and that helps with latency. Uh, it helps to address data residency issues where some companies or some organizations, very often governments, like to have data within their own jurisdiction or even within their own uh, server room, so their data centers. And lastly, of course, one can argue it, it improves control or security. Now, the security uh, services are the same. It's just the data resides within the, your country or within your data center. So it's another way of consuming public cloud services. You get the advantages of, of cloud and systems being automatically patched by uh, Oracle and updated and maintained and owned and uh, takes all of that off the table. And yet and all, you can have the machine in your data center and run whatever you like on it. Um, an IaaS machine or some PaaS services loaded. Uh, it's, pretty, it's a pretty cool offering, I have to say. And lastly, my last slide is from Oracle Open World. You may know Larry Ellison. He's been around quite a while in the industry. He still says security is still job number one at Oracle, and security uh, permeates his keynote presentation every year because it, it's always been critical for Oracle. Uh, it's even more critical as we're a cloud service prov provider. Uh, we really need to make sure the cloud is secure. Uh, and I'd say there was a couple of announcements this year, but we have been in the security space for quite a long time. So I have 18 seconds by this clock, so that's all I'm going to say for now. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.